How's it guys, this is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. And on this video, I'll be taking you through my very own team selection for the upcoming Game Week 13. So as we're calling it lucky number Game Week 13 and what a coincidence, it's a Friday night deadline. So let's hope it's on Friday the 13th. So just a reminder there, if you guys don't have it in your calendar already, or you guys can put notifications on for my channel, as I'll be going live for a deadline stream one hour before the deadline, and that can be your reminder. But no worries, if you guys can't make the deadline stream, just make sure it's in your calendar, as I want no tears if anyone misses the deadline. Now in this video, I'll be going through my upcoming team selection, one transfer already made, we made that a couple of days ago, but I'll give you guys the updated rank now that that Monday night fixture for Newcastle has concluded. So lots to still go over, some injury potential news has come about. So if you guys are interested to see my team for the upcoming Game Week 13, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So a very quick review of our Game Week 12 actually ended in the transfer plan we went in a quality depth, but obviously we had one fix just thought to come after that upload. So as you guys can see, the rank has dipped from about 58k to 63k, and that was thanks to the likes of Isaac as well as Lewis Hall. So to say that Monday night's fixture went perfectly would probably be an understatement, and Isaac Blank and a Newcastle clean sheet loss was exactly what we wanted. I guess the only thing that would have made it better is if Isaac got a red card, but that was probably too much luck, and I'm super happy with how that result actually went. So in terms of the overall game week 12 points, 90 points, a green arrow to the 63k mark, a remarkable game week to be honest. Now in the comments down below, how did your game week end? If you guys had Isaac or Lewis Hall, that's quite unlucky. What did you guys end on in terms of points and how's that overall rank looking? Now just highlighting one free transfer and 1.0 left in the bank, but that's already been used on my transfer. So the only player that still had to feature from the transfer plan was going to be Fabianski, and this clean sheet meant that Isaac blanked. We jokingly said that I wish Fabianski gets a clean sheet because that'll therefore mean Isaac doesn't get FPL points, and that's pretty much exactly what happened. So even though you're on my bench, Fabianski, I do have a lot of praise for you. And don't worry, you're going to be back in my starting 11 fairly shortly. Then the rest of the bench, Ait Nori got the two-pointer, lost the clean sheet, and then Greaves and Chuomi both didn't feature. At least Fabianski didn't outperform our starting goalkeeper, Flecken, who got the nine-pointer. Ten men Brentford finally keeping their first clean sheet of the season. I mentioned this, but back-to-back -back Everton games is simply a cheat code. And that's quite nice hauls for two weeks in a row from our goalkeepers. Our back line though left a little bit to be desired. Guardiol with the zero pointer after conceding four goals to Spurs. Wasn't expecting that and I sold both my Spurs attackers. So pretty much kind of played the odds here because I took out those attackers. I hope for a clean sheet. Obviously didn't happen. Then Diego de Lott started for the new manager at the wing back slot. Unfortunately though United being United conceded to Ipswich and overall actually drew that fixture. Now what I will add is that he was a lot better in this fixture than the previous one I watched, so fingers crossed he starts in Game Week 13. The only clean sheet from our defence or the back three came from Gabriel, a pretty impressive performance Arsenal showed against Nottingham Forest. We've spoken about how good the Nottingham Forest team can be, so super impressive to not only score but keep the clean sheet, maybe Arsenal actually back. Then our midfoot apartment, Mo Salah doing the heavy lifting, 26 points, 13 doubled, as obviously our captain. It's a very exciting game for Mo Salah, watched the entire thing, had loads of chances, could have probably had a double Hattie, but unfortunately just couldn't secure it, but we're going to take those two goals to the bank. Just continues to absolutely score double digit returns every single game week, all eyes though on him next week, he might be our captain. Unfortunately, Cole Palmer has continued this trend of bad form, he was a little bit unlucky though, had a shot on target blocked by teammate Madueke, and that would have even been a Jackson assist. So yes, quite unlucky, would have definitely loved those points, but I still back him in the upcoming fixtures. Saka also doing some heavy lifting, matching our captain Mo Salah, had a really respectable game. Goal assist plus the clean sheet point took him to 13. Now he's putting me in a little bit of a dilemma because I honestly think that Arsenal have the better fixture next week, and he managed to survive last night's game with a pretty impressive performance. After these two games, it does show Odegaard being back in the starting 11 has helped out massively, which only makes Saka a better FPL asset. Then with Mbumo, the bad form continues. Fortunately though, at his cheaper price tag, he doesn't have to score every single week. 
but those Brentford fixtures do get a lot tougher and their form hasn't been great. You would have seen in the ultimate guide yesterday, their attacking numbers have decreased, which is really not what you want to see. You also don't want to see the player you took out Kulisevsky get some points and the player you bring in Semenyo got a yellow card. So yes, I did this transfer. I took Kulisevsky out for Semenyo and for a hit. Pretty unnecessary, but I wanted to do it for future moves. You guys will understand, but this Semenyo hit allowed me to do my transfer quite early and that's going to be for Game Week 13. So I took the punch here. I hope that Semenyo ended up doing something. I think he was a little bit unlucky not to get any points as overall had a pretty solid game. He's for the future anyways though, if you had a yellow card, I was prepared for the situation. But the problem is I'm 9 points behind with Kulisevsky's points plus the hit. So let's see what happens, Spurs attack is still looking pretty okay. So no problems if you guys hold on to Kulu. Then up front the heavy hitters, Kunya as well as Jackson, both double digit returns. Kunya, I mean the form he's showing is simply outstanding and the goals he's scoring are even better. Just these absolute long range beauties, don't exactly know if he can sustain them, but I'm going to join them while they last. Just a great option, just showing why he's so much better, even though he's more expensive than his Trant Larson. No complaints on the side of the table. Then with Nicholas Jackson, hashtag play your own game. Most people went for Isaac, I went for Jackson. Let's just hope you can continue this point scoring over him. The fixtures upcoming also look pretty good. Isaac probably a little bit unlucky not to score. But Jackson could have had more points, especially for that Cole Palmer assist. So this front line kind of sums up our game week simply outstanding. A massive green arrow to 63k. As mentioned, how did your game week go? Was it a good, a bad or a great week? Don't worry, this is a safe space for every overall rank. Now before we go over the actual team selection, I can give you guys the context because I've made this move. I actually made it on Saturday evening as I had the exact funds to do it. So the upgrade I did was Chiwomi out at 4.5 to Jao Pedro for 5.5 but since then he's risen in price and might rise again. This was quite a no brainer, had enough funds to do this, Jao Pedro is one of the best value if not the best value option in the game and with Semenya's yellow card I needed a starting 11 player. So unfortunately Chiwomi exits as our third bench resident and Jao Pedro comes in after showing some better fitness. Now if you guys are concerned about the 65 minutes I wouldn't worry too much just remember he has just come back from injury, he's building that game time and I'm pretty sure his minutes being managed is a good thing. But as mentioned, just one of the best value options in the game when he does play and Brighton have ridiculous fixtures coming up. So Southampton at home as well as Leicester, two in the next three are outstanding and the next couple of fixtures, a lovely sea of green. So this transfer has been locked in as mentioned, can't see myself doing an additional hit but just keep you guys eyes on the European football for any injuries. But now let's go on to our team selection for the upcoming game week 13, pretty locked in at the moment with that one transfer made. However, as mentioned, there's been a few injuries over the Champions League fixtures. So I'm going to start off on the bench here as it kind of picks itself. Fabianski, Arsenal at home, terrible game. Guardiola, Liverpool away, terrible game. And then let's see if Greaves is back from injury. Then with Semenyo, four yellow cards, picked up the fifth one, is now suspended for a game. But should be back for game week 14 and maybe he needs the rest. Now no brainer starting Flecken with Leicester at home over Fabianski with Arsenal at home. Let's see if we can keep Brentford second clean sheet of the season. Now we might have a new manager bounce, don't think that Leicester will have a confirmed manager, so let's hope it's not too massive. Still have faith though, clean sheet odds are looking pretty strong for Brentford. Let's see if Flecken can haul again. Then our back three starting off with Gabriel, Arsenal have the best chance of a clean sheet this game week and I can probably back that, only hindrance is this is an away game. It's a little bit of a London derby here but I do expect Gabriel to do pretty well but the major concern is that apparent injury he picked up in the Champions League. Now this might have just been fatigue, it was quite late into the fixture. Don't think we'll get anything from Arteta but we might in the press conference but I'll be probably keeping hold of him unless we get definite news. Then Diego De Lott, let's just hope that he starts, Man United do play on Thursday though. We could see some rotation but if he does play Everton at home is a great fixture. We just saw in the ultimate guide the Everton attacking stats aren't that great, so a real chance of a clean sheet if he plays here. Added bonus then is if he starts at wing back, obviously a more attacking position. I'm just waiting for that a lot haul, hopefully it comes this game week. Then the final player, Ait Nori, chance of a clean sheet might not be there, but his attacking threat is always going to be there. And with Semenyo out with the suspension, I'm hoping that Bournemouth blank. So 
So not too unhappy with kind of playing him. It's a mixed bag. Sometimes he scores, sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he gets a clean sheet. Averages around the lower points, but sometimes the hole's in there. So let's see what Game Week 13 has in store for Aidenori. Fingers crossed. And that completes our back three department. Now for my own team, the Camp City debate comes down to the midfield. Currently, I do have it on Mo Salah though. As a Liverpool fan, I don't really want to watch us play without him as a captain. I just saw Man City play on Tuesday in the Champions League, 3-0 up, drawing 3-3. That defence is an absolute shambles at the moment. We didn't even have to watch the Champions League game to know that, over the last 6 games, they're the third worst defence, even less are defending better than them. That just tells me that Salah has a massive chance here, he's definitely the safe option, and at Anfield, Liverpool are always a better squad. So I don't exactly know what's going to happen, I am recording this on Wednesday evening though, before the Liverpool vs Real Madrid game. So let's see what happens in that fixture. Saka will be my vice captain. I do believe he is a great fixture here. West Ham away, they've been conceding. And with Odegaard back in the team as mentioned, they just look like a better attacking outfit. So let's see what Saka and Arsenal can do. I really am backing them. And wouldn't surprise me if he's the best option this week. I guess the same could be said about Cole Palmer. I've seen the majority on Twitter are looking to captain him. As Aston Villa might be slightly tired after the Juventus game on Wednesday. Chelsea usually rotate quite heavily in their Conference League games, so Cole Palmer should be rested. And let's see if he can bounce back from this bad form. Same can be said about Mbumo, less at home, what a fixture to redeem himself. Probably a good buy present here, as I might look to take him out in game week 14. Is still great value though at his price tag, slightly cheaper. Just hope he returns in this easier fixture. Then our front three, I won't lie to you, I do think our front three might be the best in the game at the moment. It's Cunha against Bournemouth at home, Jackson against Aston Villa at home, and Jao Pedro against Southampton. So you could probably make your argument for any other player, maybe an Isaac or Dom Solanke or even an Erling Haaland, but I'm pretty happy with the selection that I have currently. All home fixtures, all potential to absolutely explode, and I'm backing all of them to do really well in Game Week 13. I just hope Jackson manages to escape a yellow card because that means he'll be fine for Southampton in the midweek, and I kind of brought him in for that fixture. Then Jao Pedro makes his debut for our squad this season. It's the Friday night game. I'm just hoping we don't get early team shit news that he's benched. Then with Cunha, Bournemouth have been actually playing pretty well, started the season well, but it seems like Wolves are all out of attack at the moment. But this front three does wrap up our team selection. I must say the team looks really strong this game week. So let's hope it's another green arrow on the cards. Comment down below your transit dilemmas or your team selection dilemmas. Join my Discord server where I am slightly more active. That link's in the description. Otherwise, hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow for the deadline stream one hour before the deadline. That's probably the best way to get your questions answered. But this is basically going to wrap up the video, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you didn't subscribe if you have subscribed yet. Follow me over on Twitter or join the Discord server. Otherwise, see you in the stream tomorrow. But for the time being, I'm signing off. It's been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.